So, hi guys. Um, exciting times. We're at Menards in the, uh, sort of the rolling hills of uh, Horsham. It's a gorgeous place. It's like an old estate lake. So we're down here shooting a um, little rig sequence, the basic complicated rig for um, Gardner. So I've joined Gardner um, after many years. I nearly joined them years ago and I ended up having to go somewhere else. And um, so yeah, well happy to be with Gardner, who are connected with Spiro, Spiro Tackle. Um, so I've got all the broad bags and I've got all the best kit ever, I could ever imagine now. So uh, yeah, exciting times ahead. And um, like I say, we're gonna, we're gonna roll through. I'm gonna do eventually on the website, eventually some of the rigs that I've invented over the years and uh, we're gonna put them on a little portfolio of the rigs. So this one, we're gonna get started. The rods are out, as you can see, just behind me, that backdrop, it's uh, beautiful. The um, Menards has got <coughs> 200 to 250. They're not totally sure how many fish, which is nice. You know, you still get that romance of not, not knowing totally what's in here. Um, we know there's possible sort of 540s, and uh, we're going to see if we can catch one. I've only got till tomorrow morning, um, so we've got another 24 hours. And, uh, and then we've got to be off, because uh, as it's spring now, um, everyone's coming out. They're dusting off the rods, and uh, so we've got, we're up against a bit of time. Uh, you know, it haven't got a lot of time, but we'll see, you know, it can be a tricky water. And, um, but I think I'm in the right spot. I did it all right last night. Um, I had a couple of liners this morning and uh, yeah, we'll get on, um, crack on with the rig. And uh, this rig is basically, I've caught more 30s and 40s on this rig alone. It's my go-to rig and it's the easiest rig. Um, so we're gonna show you the products that we're using. And uh, ironically, the BCR hooks stands for the basic complicated rig. Sometimes the planets align and uh, I think they have. So we'll get on with the rig and uh, hopefully have a fish as well. So guys, let's talk basic complicated rig. It's a rig I've developed for 95, 96, and uh, it's one of those, it, it's my go-to rig. Um, I use it from April to November. Um, and there's a reason I don't, which I will explain in a minute, but it's, it, I called it the basic complicated because it's complicated for a carp to deal with, being invisible, um, the way that the carp feed. Um, they feed differently in the spring, summer and autumn. In the winter, they're pinning themselves, you know, they're very lethargic, they're, they, they only feed in little windows of opportunity, maybe an hour, maybe two hours at 24. But in the spring, you can catch them all day long, you know, and, uh, and they're just, they're motoring around. And the way they feed, um, and trust me, I've put tape measures and all sorts on 30 pound carp because that's what my target, what the target market is. And um, so they, they'll, they'll tip themselves up, um, but because of their frangle plates on a 30 pounder, it's five inches back from the mouth. That's their grinding plates. You know, we call it the frangle plates, but throat teeth. Um, so if they stayed in a vertical position like that, all the food would fall out. So they have to come up. And that's why I do the rig um, and I've, I've measured, I've measured 30 pounders, put them in, tilted them up, measured, and it's between seven to nine inches. They come up by the time they're, you know, it depends on the shape of the carp. You know, some of them are slimmer and they might, you know, you might catch them a little bit further back or just on the edges of the mouth. But it's primarily, it catches, um, once they come up and then they start grinding the food, boom, they've hit, they, they, it generally hooks in the scissors. Whereas like the Wivy Pool Rig hooks, dead in the center. If you've got on a pop-up, it's dead in the center, even on bream and tench it does, you know, even tiny mouths. It's just more mechanically astute. But this one, um, I've caught probably, with the tuitions, got over 500 English 30s and 40s. Um, that says to me, this, this works. You know, you do, it, it, it's a go-to rig that you can tie up in a minute. You know, if you're one of those guys that ain't got a lot of time or you don't, you know, your missus is giving you grief or whatever and you're not allowed to do this and do that, you can get to the lake, tie one up, put it out there, it doesn't tangle. You can slide bags down it. You can put a round stringer on, which confuses the hell out of them. They come across seven baits sat there and your one's in the middle. And they just, I've watched them. They suck the whole thing up, up they go, bam, and it's uh, photograph time. So um, without further ado, I'll, um, I'll talk a bit more as I'm making it um, about the do's and the, and the don'ts. You know, there's, um, it's very simple um, using a lead clip. But like I say, we go, but you, you've got to use a ring swivel with it. You have to, and I'll show you why once we've tied one up and I'll tie it to that and I'll show you the reasons why. Um, so without further ado, we'll get on and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to tie one. So the base is complicated. So easy as explained in the intro part. Um, so easy to make. Um, tiger line. This is Gardner's, this is their flagship. Um, it's a strong statement, saying it's the best in the world, but I've been around 
loads of lime companies over the years. I've been to factories, I've seen how fluorocarbons made, um, and this has got to be um, the most supplest. It's awesome. It doesn't kink. It's uh, you know you can use it as a main line, um, but like I've picked up on it straight away. Obviously, the basic complicator rig. Sometimes, I think I mentioned this before, the planets align. Um, so we got in the range the best hooks I've ever used. Um, these are these are the, the riggers, BCRs. So we didn't click to start with. I sort of picked up and I thought basic complicated rig. <laughs> That's perfect. I'm made for life. So all we, all we do in chaps with the tiger line, you take off about you know you could take off a decent a decent sort of length. I don't know about sort of um, 12 inches, 14 inches, and you're just tying a little tiny overhand loop just that's just you know i think everyone knows how to do that um and just to put it's just to put your boil on a lot to say this is the rig's very basic um and uh so you take out you can use you can use a wafter you can use a bottom bait um straight out of the packet which i tend to do a lot if i'm using the round stringer that's what I do, you know, on the uh, on the tuitions. That's, that's I teach them just to use it the, straight out of the bag. You know, this is a Blake's Milking Up Pro, little twelve miller, and uh, so we just all you're doing putting that on, just a little boily stop. It's nothing to uh, like I say. This is basic, but it's a complicated rig for the carp to deal with. So we take one of these little beauties, the BCR hook, and it's important to mention that. Because of the angle, let me take that out of my mouth. <laughs> because of the angle of the hook, I use size eights, which are, you know, the smaller the hook, the smaller the gauge, the smaller the hole. Um, I've always found bigger hooks, they make a bigger hole and they're easier to pop out, you know, when you get the fish under the rod tips. With the small ones, they go in, they stay in. And uh, because of the angle, that, that once we've tied the little, the, the little um, the ser series of knots in there, I'll show you how and how it kicks off. Um, you've got a, a, a a tiny hook, very, very sharp. Um, and I've, that's, you know, I've used 20 millers with size eights and they still work. Um, so all we're doing now, very important with this rig, like I said, the BCR, which is um, the rigger, the, the Gardner rigger hooks, you've got to have that outturned eye. If you have a straight eye or a slightly intern, I spent about a year in 95, 96, I was losing fish and it was cutting off just above where the hook was. Oh, I couldn't work it out. I could not work it out to start with. And, uh, and then I realised it was because of the angle of the, the hook. That's when I started bending them with pliers. I was bending the hooks with pliers and uh, catching every fish I was hooking, I was catching them. So all we're doing is taking our length of fluorocarbon, the tiger line, through the back of the eye. So it goes through that away. Uh, and then we just hold the hook down just so it passes, just so it passes the, um, the bottom of the bend. And then with your other finger and thumb, hold it in place like that. And then you just go round the hook, go right. So half a turn, now, now we're gonna go one, two, three. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop the hair and then we come round the hair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So take the, take the hook link out the back and then come through the back of the eye again with the with the remainder of the hook link and then without pulling it tight to start with slide the knot up with your fingers because what happens if you pull it pull it straight away like a lot of people are a bit heavy-handed with rigs and what you'll end up with a little kink there and you don't want that and as you can see there look how aggressive that is that is so aggressive it's almost you know, animal cruelty police <laughs> but um it's uh so, so that, like I say, it, it's not a flip and turn rig. It doesn't, you know, it's, it, it's all this nonsense about palms and whatever. That's never looked like a carp's mouth, you know, a carp, carp's mouth's like that. Um, and it's, see that, it took, took into the sides already. And that's what happens when the fish come up, it goes into the scissors, generally. You do hook them sometimes in, uh, in different places, but most of the time, I'd say probably 90% of the time, you'll hook them. Um, and you can see how quickly that is to tie. Um, you can get to, the, get to your venue, Boom, 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 three rigs done. You can slide down a mesh bag or you can tie on um, a round stringer, which is, that's deadly. The round, the round stringer, that is simple. Um, you've got the Gardner braided PVA string, put six baits down there. Um, and 
it's as easy I once this is once that's tied on I normally I normally have it because we're do, doing the rig demo here I normally have that hanging off the rod so I'm using the weight of the lead um, but I can tie this on just show you quickly so all, all we're um all we're doing here is just do a couple of um cut the granny knots because if you don't do a couple and you only do one it will slip and uh, you don't want that and we're pulling that right up to um as you can see that's right up to the to the bend of the um bend of the hook so we've got two now and now all i'm doing now is i'm sliding that round to the knot okay so on your bottom bait the bottom one there there's a little see the little loop there you just hook that through hook that through and then take the hook bait poke that through there so it goes into a little little round stringer so we'll take we'll cut that off and just to be double sure i always tie the hair down again so you just use that bit that you've cut off there of the, of the string tie this on to the hair and this one you this one you only need um you only need to do this once this one doesn't come undone so just one little overhand loop granny knot whatever you want to call it where's it gone guy my age i tell you i'm gonna need some glasses soon so you just tie tie that down and that's just you know everything in carp fishing is percentages and uh and, and down to rigs you know so just that little that little extra bit where you're tying because it can flip over but that is absolutely deadly uh, they don't know what to do with it they really don't and there's not many people that use that type of method and um they can't work out their eyesight's nowhere near as good as ours especially when the springs up and, and the water starts clouding and they're moving around and there's you know so they come along they just take the whole lot up and uh and boom it's um like i say it's a it's a very easy one it doesn't tangle and uh important to say um so what i do is always use I'm using obviously the garden and lead clips but a ring swivel it's it's imperative you use a ring swivel if you tie it straight to um a normal you know a normal quick change clip or whatever which i've never used those quick chains well, what's the point well, who's, who's in a hurry um, I, I don't get it i just don't get them to be fair um i'm old school but so a ring swivel if you tied that to there normally that can do that it can loop up right with a ring swivel it lets it drop down and uh, it's a very important part. Like I say, percentages are all key to, uh, to to being successful. So what I'll um what I normally do to get the distance, um, like I say, when they you know, like I said in the in the previous chat, they they go up, and I want it between seven and seven and nine inches. So what I do is work out from from the ring swivel down to the hook bait. I know my fingers, but that's five inches apart. So by the time I tie a four turn grinner knot and then slide it down, it should be about eight inches. So what you've got, and just ease that up, you know, fluorocarbon, you don't want to be kinking it. And that, that lovely little grinner knot slides up there. There's no damage on that whatsoever. And then you just ease that in, pull that bit tight, and you're ready to go. You know, it, the other thing you can you can do, um, you can make a mesh bag up of hemp, the PVA friendly hemp from Blake's, that's what I normally use, or the mini mix pellets. And you could just slide that, before you tie that on, you slide it down and then that covers the hook. The, the hook is literally covered in pellet or, so it's covered, it's, it's literally invisible. The whole thing's invisible. And uh, always use a heavy, heavy lead with it. But what you can do, that sort of setup, you can put three of them out there, whether you're on a big, I've caught on big pits, small pits, under bushes, everywhere. It's just, it's, I say it's my go-to rig. Um, but you can cast them out and then just flick baits all over the place, scatter them everywhere, because you want the fish doing that, you know? You want them picking up the bait, moving on to the next one, picking it up and get competitive. And, uh, and that's it, that's, that's, the, that's the basic complicated rig.
uh, yeah, good 20. Old school mirror. And uh, yeah, after, uh, it's not a lot of time, 36 hours, but and it's a difficult lake, you know. Um, it's not an easy water. Uh, even the owner asked me to say that. It's not an easy water. It's not for, it's not for your novices, um, but beautiful place. And uh, this is the type of carp you can catch. Unfortunately, the one I lost was bigger than this one. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna wrap the session up because we're literally over our allocated time now. She came in at the last uh, saving grace, but uh, yeah, happy days.